Right now, we are living in a world where everything may just seem overwhelming to us. Things have changed so much in just one week. Obviously, even this is different from us. Summit online, what? But that's what we're called to do right now. And that's how we're going to roll. My guess is that some of us may feel a little overwhelmed with this. If you turn on the news within minutes, you just get this overwhelming sense of this is craziness. Most of us have probably been a part of a project or a situation where things have just seemed so overwhelming. And we can't see past the problem that is right in front of our face because that is so big to us. But once we start to work through it and we make it into smaller steps, it seems a little more manageable. Then we start to calm down. It isn't as big of a deal anymore once we break it down to smaller things. So we're wrapping up our Bible series right now. And it's interesting that our last lesson in this is our first online video. And we've been talking about the Bible and how it's been a love letter created for us. And it's also been a guide that God wrote for us. But here's the truth. The Bible can be overwhelming. That's how a lot of people feel about it. When they look at the Bible, it's this huge book filled with people, places, things, and ideas. And they may seem huge and feel so big and overwhelming when we just look at it like that. Even the Bible, to me, has felt overwhelming at times. Reading and understanding the Bible can become a little more easy to manage if we break it down into smaller steps. I've tried many different ways of reading the Bible. You know, I've tried opening the Bible, closing my eyes, and just picking a verse. Doesn't usually work really well, especially if you end up in Leviticus. I was told, maybe just read a psalm a day. And yeah, all these things are great ways, except for the one of pointing to the Bible. But, you know, we have apps now that will send you a verse a day. These things are great. Today, we're going to talk about a different technique. Ironically, right now, we are told that we need to be washing our hands more, right? And I hope you're doing that. And I really hope you're using soap when you do it. You're not just putting your hands in the water right now. Soap is a technique that we're going to use for the Bible as well. Just as we wash our hands with soap, we should wash our souls with soap as well. Soap, this is what it stands for. Scripture, observation, application, prayer. It's an easy way and it's effective of how we can remember how to read the Bible. You can use the SOAP method for any way of scripture. But today we're going to look at James 1 with this. So go ahead, pull out your Bibles, turn to James 1, and we're going to get there soon. The S, scripture. That's where we're going to start. This part is pretty straightforward. Scripture, what do you do with it? You read it. That's what you do. Don't read too much of it. Maybe read a chapter, maybe just a few verses. Don't pick up the Bible and think you're going to read it all in one night. It's not going to work that way. It's going to be overwhelming if you take it on like that. There's a lot of ways you can read the scriptures. You can even listen to it. I do that on the way to work sometimes. It's great. But here's four steps that I want to practice when you're reading scripture. Obviously, first, you read it. We're going to get to that in a second. And then maybe the second step is you reread. You might think that you understand something, but it's not until you read it a second or a third time or a fourth time that you really hear what God is trying to say in that situation. Next, I would say you underline. What stood out in Scripture to you? You know, Highlight it. There's things that pop off across the page to us that we just are so excited about. What I'm saying is, underline that. Take note of what stood out to you. And lastly on that, write. This may be new for some of you guys, but I found that writing sometimes helps us remember things. Maybe you write the scripture out a couple of times. It's a great way to memorize it. You know, do whatever works best for you, but remember to read it first. It's filled with so many scriptures that we could look at and just be memorized by. But I want to focus on James 1. I think that this is a great chapter of focusing, especially with everything going on right now in the world. So let's read James 1 together. This is from James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am writing to the 12 tribes, Jewish believers scattered abroad. Greetings. 
Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask your generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Believers who are poor have something to boast about, for God has honored them, and those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like little flowers in the field. The hot sun rises and the grass withers. The little flowers drops and falls, and its beauty fades away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all their achievements. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you're being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heaven. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chooses to give birth to us by giving us his true word, and we out of all creation became his prized possession. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word of God that has planted in your hearts for it has the power to save your souls. Do not just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be righteous but don't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself, and religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the word corrupt you. My challenge to you tonight is to reread that on your own and maybe once or twice tonight. So we already looked at scripture as the S. Now we need to move on to the O. O, observation. Look for important things or themes and ideas that popped out in that. What's the big picture here? Are there certain words that are repeated? What's the purpose of this passage? It's easy to put our own spin on scripture and to try to make it fit into whatever we would like it to say. But remember this, it's God's letter written to us. Our responsibility is to figure it out, not to make it fit what we want God to say to us. So right now, I want you at home to take a minute and write down on a piece of paper your observations about James 1. Let's move on to A, application. Once you've read the scripture passage, then you need to make some observations about it. Now we're ready for application. 
The Bible was written with purpose, which means we should always try to find the purpose behind every scripture that we read. We just read in verse 22 that we can't just read the Bible. We have to do what it says. Sometimes it's pretty obvious how we should apply the passage of scripture we read. In the case of James, it's very easy for us to do that. You know, we're giving clear commands. Now we need to take some action with it. Not every scripture is like James, though. Some passages won't have that clear action step for us. Sometimes passages might teach us simply about who God is. In that case, your action is to simply thank God for who he is and what he has done for you. Other passages might tell a story. The Bible is filled with people that did things, went places, but here's something we need to remember. Not everything in the Bible, the way people lived, was good. The Bible is filled with some people that did some terrible things, so we need to be careful that we don't mimic those ways, and that's why it's so important for us to read the Bible in context. We understand a passage's context, then we can better understand its purpose. And when we understand its purpose, we can better understand what we actually have to do about it. So right now I want you to take some time and write down how you can apply James 1. Lastly is prayer. Sometimes you'll read scripture and have no idea what it's saying. Other times you'll understand what it's saying, but not want to do what it's telling you to do. I've been there too. For both of those situations, you're going to need God's help. Ending with prayer can help you invite God into the process of helping you understand applying his words. That is what the Bible is. It's God's words. And if anyone understands them, it's God. So pray to him, ask him for help, ask him for understanding. That's the best way to go about this. Soap. Whether you only have 10 minutes to spare or you have an hour to invest in reading the Bible, you can use these four steps to read scripture at any time. The point isn't how long you spend reading scripture. The point is that you do it and you do what it says in James. You do something about it. The Bible isn't just for reading. The Bible is for doing. Like James says, reading scripture is only the first step in the process. We can't just simply read it. We have to do what it says. It takes practice to read the Bible. It takes practice to turn those words into action. But let me tell you, it's so worth it in the end. In fact, most things that we do in life take practice, and those are the things that are worth it. Now is the time for us to be in God's word. With all this uncertainty going around, we need to surround ourselves with truth. And that truth comes from the Bible. I pray during this time that you will cling to God's word for peace and comfort. Because that's where you're truly going to get it. You have this available at your fingertips. I encourage you this week, if you don't, haven't downloaded a Bible app, do that. Or maybe you go old school, dust off your Bible you haven't used in a while, and read through that way. Maybe even talk to some friends about how can we do this together. If you do it with someone else, it's going to make it easier, and it's going to make it easier for you to do something about it because you have someone who's holding you accountable. The Bible isn't just some old book. The Bible is a love letter written to us by Christ. It's a guide. It's an invitation. And it's not just for us to read, it's for us to do something with. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful that you have provided your word to us. 
Lord, right now as we are living in a time where things are just crazy and may even seem to be like the world is shutting down, we know that you do not shut down on us, Lord. Would you um, grant peace to those who are struggling with all this going on, Lord? Would you instill in our hearts that you, your word, would we cling to it? Would we know the truth of it, Lord? Your word is a love letter to us. We are thankful for that. We are thankful that your word is a guide for our lives. So would we take action in that as we read your words, and would we do something about it? We ask this in your name. Amen.